started? you came to church thank you for coming this morning it's great to see you you're looking good a couple of couple of announcement things here this morning to go over um, we got this we're gonna put in uh, handicapped parking places on the west side of the ramp so it's gonna cost a little extra money so I wanted to let you know about that right away Saturday May 27th Stan Coon we're gonna have a graveside service up at JM Cemetery so uh, if anyone would like to join us, you're welcome to. Do you remember Stan and Patty? They've been living in Colorado, close to family, so I uh, know that's going on. Uh, next Sunday, communion, Memorial Day weekend, so that'll be great. And uh, I think that's about all the new announcements. Anybody have any others? Don't forget anything? All right. Glad you're graduations today. Graduations, we like that. So we have that in mind. Um, what about birthdays? Birthdays this morning. Any birthdays? Margie? Mom's is on Wednesday. Mom's is on Wednesday. Yes. Happy birthday, Mom. How old? 66 this year. Linda. We'll chalk that up to your husband's ability to count. Yeah. Happy birthday. Anybody else? Whose hand is up? Diane? Earl's birthday was last Thursday. Earl, happy birthday to you. Thank you. You're doing good. All right. Who else? Nate's birthday? Courtney's was on the 2nd of May. Good. Happy birthday, Courtney. Somebody back there. Max? No, Jacob? <coughs> oh, say it louder. Who's? Kara. Kara, your birthday Saturday? How many are you? Eleven? Double ones. Raise your hand if eleven was a good year for you. Raise your hand if eleven was a good year. There you go, Kara. 11 is a good year. Rustin? Brit's on 25th. Brit's on 25th. Happy birthday, Brit. Man, a lot of birthdays. Who's back there? Lindy? Next Sunday. Saturday, Saturday. Lindy. Happy birthday. How many are you? Huh? 12? Ooh, raise your hand if 12 was a good year. Let's take a little vote for Lance and Kara. Which one would you say was better, 11 or 12? So if you think 11 was better, raise your hand. Okay, put them down. If you think 12 was better, raise your hand. Hmm, it's pretty even. Sorry, guys. It's going to be that way. It's going to be that way. All right, happy birthday. We want to sing. Let's sing this morning. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Anybody celebrate an anniversary the, near the end of May? Anybody? All right, no anniversaries. If you're with your sweetie, tell them thanks for sticking it out with me. 
Oh, what? Oh, where, where, where? Katie and Devin. Katie and Devin, where are you at? Well, Devin's not here, so he's all right now. Toby, you're next week? 24, that's right. Okay, we're waiting for Devin to sing, right? Yeah, that would be good. Happy anniversary. Yeah. All right, thanks for coming to church. It's great to see you this morning. We have another graduation to celebrate. So we're going to do that this morning. And uh, I thought about this. I found this dumb little thing. Look at this. A graduated ceremony is an event where the commencement speaker tells thousands of students dressed in identical caps and gowns that individuality is the key to success. <laughs> right? It's not. It's not. But happy uh, graduations today. Hey, we're going to take our hymnal, turn to number 132. We're going to stand and sing, Blessed be the day. this service uh, planned so well and I love it to have, be here but with God and we want to sing this song. My God is still the same and sometimes things seem like they change and move and happen in our lives but God's not surprised. He knows what's going on. Just ask the waves if they're still there.
with me in prayer this morning? Will you bow in prayer? Almighty Father in heaven, and living Lord Jesus and Holy Spirit, this is a wonderful morning to be in church. It's a beautiful morning. Thank you for everyone who's here, God. Your, your blessings come to us. And we just pray for your Spirit's anointing and your help and uh, your love today. May we know your peace and your goodness to us. And God, may you equip us for this week ahead always that uh, we will be ready to show and act as you would have us. So, Father, forgive us, we pray, and uh, bring us back into your blessings and goodness this morning. We love you. Thank you, Jesus, in your name. Amen? Amen. 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 How many of you uh, had this on your mouth sometime this week? So, Molly, we're going to take just a moment. Would you stand up for just a moment? Or actually, come up here. Come here, Molly. I want you to think about something and the kind of week some people have. And, Molly, I want you to kind of roll with us for just a few moments about the week that God's blessed with, okay? So what day was the, how did it start this week? Well, at, my grandson was born, oh my gosh, oh, you know yeah. I can't do this. You can do it, Molly. That's why I called you without telling you early, I told you. <laughs> my grandson was born on May 12th, four weeks early, and we found out in January he was going to have, or he had a major heart defect, worse than his mama's when she was born 34 years ago. When they got in there on Friday, he was a week old, they opened him up and they took care of things, but he had even more defects. God was able to bless the surgeons and little Axel. They were able to use a lot of his own parts to fix some things. This is the first open heart surgery he'll have. He'll have two more within the next few months to a couple years. And um, he was born 513 at four weeks early, so he was bigger than they anticipated. Um, and everything has been working out the way it's supposed to. It's kind of like NCIS and Gibbs says, there's no coincidence. Right. God put us where we were supposed to be when Erin was born and where she was taken care of best. Same way with little Axel. And blessing Erin and Austin and their little Aria so much with all the doctors and the care that they've received. It's hard being here, but I know God's taking care of everything. Yeah. So little Axel this morning is about... He's almost six pounds. He's laying in a little incubator. Yep. His chest is open. Yes. They leave the window open and they have him covered with a little plate. And uh, he's just healing. He is. And he's getting better, isn't he? He is. They may be able to close that, his chest today or tomorrow as the swelling goes down and as they look at his levels and what have you. So, Lord, I need you. Did all you say time. that at all that, this week, Mom? About Did every minute that? of every hour. <laughs> Yes. We're going to pray. Thank you. Father God, we pray for little Axel. We're so happy you've answered prayers already in special ways for his mama and his dad and sister, grandma and family. Father, we've put him in your hands many times already. And it's just remarkable how God you work and you move in every detail of so many lives throughout this week. Father, thank you for blessing. Thank you for being with us. And we need you. I know I put you on the spot. If I told you early, she'd have a hard time. Worst time. So I know I did that. But I wanted you to hear a little bit about some people's prayers this week, right? And where we're at in the world. And things that are going on. It's not all about the national deficit, is it? Have you heard enough about that? It's not all about those things. It's about God working in our lives right where we are and what's happening in our homes. And so if you've had God this week and he's been there for you, I would, I would hope you can give thanks this morning. And, and this song is about that prayer. So let's sing this together.
praying, always thank you for praying for folks. Uh, it's so important, so important. So today we have Elise, Elise Harris, who graduated last week. So Elise, come on up, bring your family with you. We're going to celebrate a little bit this morning about your graduation from high school. So Jeff, Danae, and Autumn. Jeff and Danae, you have an empty house, kind of. Kind of. But not for the summer. No. No. It'll be full. Yes. Yes. Elise, are you glad to be done with school? Yes and no. Why no? Because uh, this year was like the only good year of high school I've had. It was a good year, wasn't it? Yeah. I made a lot of friends. I'm kind of sad to leave. Kind of sad it's over. Good yeah. for you. How many of you were sad when high school was over and you graduated? Raise your hand. How many of you were sad when it was over? I see three hands, so you're not alone, please. <laughs> you're not alone. I was, like the only, I was like the only person that was sad that I was graduating. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Elise, what are future plans? Talk about your future. Um, well, I'm going to go to WNCC and get my paramedic certificate, my associate's degree, and then I'm going to train on the moral fire department and get on my, like, fire, um, I'm going to go to fire school and get um, registered for everything. Right. Yeah. So Elise is going to be a paramedic. What a good idea that paramedic is. Paramedic huh? firefighter. And a firefighter. Mm -hmm. Takes more time for the firefighter or that just comes after the paramedic? Uh, comes after. Yeah. Sure. Whatever, however it works out. I don't know. Well, we're proud of you. We're very glad that you can do that because I know you've been anticipating it for a long time. Mm -hmm. So we wish you the best. All right, we're going to look at some pictures. Jeff, you'll hold that for a moment. Okay. We'll look at some pictures of Elise. Now, Autumn, her sister, is a graphic design artist working on that at school. So we'll see how the pictures look. Right, Autumn? Sure, the text was supposed to be white, so I didn't see it. It's what? It was supposed to be white. Oh, what? No, that happened when I did it. Okay. The background was different. Now it changed when I loaded it up. So, okay. yeah. So there's Elise getting ready for fire school. And there she is when she was young and adorable. <laughs> How things change, Elise. <laughs> oh. Looks like you. Did you like dinosaurs? Oh my gosh, I was obsessed with dinosaurs. You were obsessed with dinosaurs? Yeah. What grade were you or what age? Oh no, I was always obsessed with dinosaurs. Oh, you like dinosaurs. Good for you, girl. Jeff, any of those pictures you want to tell us about, you sure can. What's this one? Halloween over here in the corner? Yeah. Yes. So we see a lot of pictures with her and her sister. Were they like always together? Yes. Yeah, yeah they were best of friends. We wanted to have a family close in age together specifically for that. And, yeah. and they're, they're the best of friends, not only sisters. A lot of them think that they're twins, but they're not. They're not twins. That's right. They're Four, not. 14 months apart. 14 months is all. But look, they're always together, aren't they? It's pretty wonderful. So you kind of got to pick out a picture here or there and look at it. Yeah, sisters. Elise survived pretty well without you this year, Autumn. But she had a heart. she likes it when you're there better. Family pictures. All right. Do you do a lot of goose hunting? Yes. So in the fall. Fall, winter. Yep. Yeah. We're in the goose pit most okay. of the time. And what else? Some vacations and family time. Absolutely. Many, many vacations. We do everything together. Go everywhere together. Yeah. You do. You do good. You do good. She's always been a little animal lover. All of our dogs, they just glue to her all the time. She cuddles with them when we're out camping. Uh, we love the lake. Oh, the snake. Was that last year? That was last year. I caught a snake. Yep. Yeah. Well, the dogs like you because you bring fish and geese home for them. <laughs> uh, good times. Yeah. 
Say again. These these ones are bloopers that Autumn put together, and oh, bloopers. Elise didn't want her to do this, but <laughs> yeah, I see sticky like tongue. Which you one? Like which one? The cat one. The cat one. Yeah, what's happened with the cat? <laughs> you know what? It's like Simba Lion King. The, oh, you're holding Simba up for the Lion King. Oh, I thought you were getting ready to sacrifice it. <laughs> But good ones, Autumn. All right, here's some looking to the future. These are so, some of the senior pictures that we took of Elise at the firehouse in Morrill. Okay. Her or my my bunker gear fits her, so I guess that. Oh, it does. Yeah. He's tiny. So, tiny Elise, man. have you been able to be part of any calls yet? Or when does that happen? Um, I haven't been a part of any calls, but I have done a lot with them. Okay for training and exercises. We're starting a cadet program specifically for her, but when she's 19, she can become a full member on the department and options are endless after that. Okay, and here's your graduation picture. You look good, man. you look good. Thank you. You look good. Jeff, what would you say for us today concerning your daughter, what kind of Speeches have you come up with today? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't seem like you yeah. Dear Elise, no words can ever explain how proud we are of you. Yeah. You have become such an amazing woman. From the time we went on our first fish, fishing adventure, you were in the weeds trying to catch snakes while we were f all fishing. <laughs> to the time not long ago when I stood beside you when you received your first basic life support CPR certificate. Continue down your path with Jesus beside you. Go far. <laughs> Do great things. Save many lives. Protect as many Protect as much as you can from those raging fires. Mommy and I will always help you the best that we can. You will always be our little inspiration and our little angel. Love, Mommy and Daddy. Yesterday we had a funeral service for one of my friends, our lieutenant on the fire department passed away and, and uh, we had a full fire department service and Elise stood beside me through that whole service and, and she stood up there with about 75 other fire department members from Scottsbluff County and it was quite an honor to have her up there with me and, and learn that and experience that. Come on over, we're going to pray for you, Elise. We're going to pray, we're going to pray. <laughs> Almighty Father in heaven, you brought Elise into this world, you put her together just right, and uh, put her and her family together, and you made a wonderful home. You've blessed Jeff and Danae, and you've helped along the way, you've given Autumn great sister. So Father, today we pray over Elise, thinking about her future and how far she's come and some of the challenges she's fought her way through. And Jesus, I just love it that she is close to you and always wants to stand strong for you and for the kingdom of heaven. So I pray along with us, her father said, that as she helps many people in the future, when they're in distress or times of heartache and troubles, that Elise might be gifted with that 
the Spirit's ability to comfort or to pray or to encourage or to rescue or to help. We ask God that you watch over and protect her, not only from the physical things of this world, but from the evil one who tries to destroy. God, we pray for her these today. And we give her to you and commit her into your hands. And say thank you for her. Bless her in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I know, you cry. cry. She's a cry. She, yeah, she cried. Yeah, she cried the whole time. Yeah. I have, you left, or they left the, an important story out. Oh, stand up. We can't hear you if you're sitting down talking to us. The day Ali graduated after her reception, I walked outside and fell flat on my face. Danae was yelling, Deb, Deb. Autumn was yelling, Dad, Dad. <laughs> Autumn said, I didn't scream. Ali goes, or Elise, I mean, Elise said, I didn't yell. I assessed the situation, turned your face to see if it was bleeding, and then rolled you over. <laughs> I was her first victim. <laughs> Autumn, why isn't that picture on here? <laughs> we want to see your old grandma over. <laughs> That's a good memory right there. Thank you. Thank you for letting us know. Thank you for letting us know. We're going to stand and sing number 490, Jesus Loves Me, and thinking of the children and how he helps us. Number 490 in our hymn book. Jesus Loves Me. Save me from eternal separation from God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he gives me everlasting life. Amen. 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 Time to pray. Where's the boys and girls? Where's the boys? And
Father in heaven, thank you for the boys and girls. We love them. Well, Jesus, we know you love them very, very much. So protect and keep them every day, we pray. Protect and keep their hearts and their minds from the Lord. And let your spirit watch over and guide them. God, take care of them. Each one we ask in your precious name. In Jesus' name. Will you pray the Lord's Prayer with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Hey, turn and tell your neighbor who was your graduation speaker at your commencement ceremony. Tell your neighbor who your graduation speaker was for commencement when you graduated. How many remember who your graduation speaker was? Carl, who was it? Stan Hathaway. Stan Hathaway. He graduated from Yeah. Oh. Huh. Pretty good. How do you remember what your class song was? How many remember what your class flower was? How about your class motto? A few of you have lived by that for many years. Well, it does go away, doesn't it, a little bit. It starts to fade after a while. But we're very glad that uh, today is one of those days of inspiration for people, and uh, we appreciate so much all of those who give those speeches and, and take care and remind our kids how important they are. Hey, we want to pray this morning. We've been praying for Roy, and uh, today is his birthday. And he's home. He got home this week. So Roy is home and uh, celebrating a birthday, and we're very glad for answers to prayers there. We're praying for Axel, so we keep him on our hearts in prayer. And then Edie, we had a prayer request. Edie, I don't know if we had a slight... She had a mild stroke. A mild stroke this week. She's home as well, but we want to pray for Edie. Keep hearing her in our prayers. And then the Eisenbarth family, we had a nice funeral service for Lorraine on Friday, and flowers are here from their family, and so we think about them this morning. So uh, let's take a few minutes and pray. Would you bow with me in prayer? Father in heaven, glorious time to come before your throne. And we've worshipped you. We've sang songs about you and how great you are. And uh, Father, we just appreciate how you hear our prayers every day. And Lord, we know in the battles of life that there are uh, foes who are unseen. We know the enemy is trying to get us in different ways. And, so we just stand against him today in the name of Jesus, our Savior. And we uh, ask for your presence, your love, your peace, your power to be here with us today. God, we pray for these folks today. Answers for prayer for Roy. Lord, how wonderful it is that he made a home for his birthday. And uh, we ask that you be with him and Billy and watch over them, give them strength and, and uh, give, them, give them encouragement. God, thank you for helping Axel. Thank you for these reports we can have today. And as we pray for that little man, you bring the healing, God. You bring that healing. <laughs> Father, we lift Edie to you today. And we thank you for her and all the ministry she's had in our communities for so long. And we just ask, God, that you would touch and be with her today and help her and uh, let her be well. We pray for that too, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for helping many and... Uh, Think of others we've been praying for along the way, and we just uh, ask God that you would be with them. 
Continue to help and love and show your, your grace to them. God, this morning we also want to pray for our country. We are hearing all kinds of things and stories and stuff going on. But God, we still put it all in your hands. We just trust you with this whole nation and all the people herein. We give them to you, God, and ask for your direction, your care, your way. And when we read your word, we know that things will always have turmoil and complications. We should not be surprised when the world is struggling. Father, let us trust you. Let us trust you. Thank you for being here in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Carl, prayer request. Uh, Karen Brasnick, uh, knee replacement, Wednesday. Yes. Last Wednesday, and she needs prayers. Good. Father, we lift Karen up to you and her knee replacement and, and trust God that it was, we're going well, but we just pray for her recovery, her strength, her her uh, her nerve to keep going and to fight through those pains and the physical therapy. God, thank you for being with her and helping her in this time. Lord, be with her. And we pray for Mary Jane's leg as well when we think about her healing. So, Father, bring that healing too, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Carl, for that reminder. Any other prayers this morning? All right. Titus chapter 3. Take your Bibles. We're going to the last chapter of the book of Titus this morning. Be devoted to doing what is good. Be devoted to doing what is good. How do we say that? Maybe it's a statement, not as much as a question. But I want you to look at Titus chapter 3, read verses 7 and 8. The Red Bible, you're on page 1859. And if you're in the Maroon Bible, you're on page 1700. We're going to read these two verses together. Go ahead. Read those out loud with your neighbor, if you would. Titus chapter 3, 7 and 8. Go, 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 go. Here. Excellent and profitable for everyone. Reminders today. If you go to verse 1 of Titus chapter 3, go to verse 1. It says, remind the people. The Apostle Paul is talking to Titus. Titus is carrying this message, these messages from Paul, and he's going to the island of Crete. So we're thinking about what do we need to remember today? What is going to be said in chapter 3 of Titus for us to remember? Well, let's remember first who was Titus, a friend and helper of Paul. He was a missionary. He carried not only messages, but he helped organize churches. He helped bring people to Christ. He helped put ministries together. And so it was a big call for Titus. Even though he was a young man, he still went out and said, in the name of God, I can do this. In the name of Christ, our Savior, I will do this. So he went out. He went out, and at the very beginning of the book of Titus, it says to straighten things out and set up churches on Crete. So they were having some difficulties, but at the same time, they were ready for Titus to come and visit. We've looked at where the island of Crete is located, just off of Greece. We've looked at those pictures where you're dreaming about in January, where you would rather be, but not so much this time of year, because it's so green and beautiful here, right? I'll be your neighbor and say, the grass is getting as tall as my knee. Go ahead, tell them. The grass is getting as tall. It almost was, right? How many times have you mowed your yard this year? Twice? Once? Not yet? Okay, good. Put the goats out because it's going to be a little tall. We're looking at those pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crete is this island, it, this letter, and all of this happens. We hear about it in uh, the book of Acts. Acts chapter 27 talks about the island of Crete when Paul was making his final journey and he was going to Rome. And as he went to Rome, they stopped on the island of Crete where they should have wintered, but they didn't. They kept going, and the hurricane hit them, and they ended up shipwrecking on Malta over here on this side for the winter, and then finally made it to Rome. So you can read this story in the book of Acts about that. But Titus, Titus, what was he doing? These things talk about Titus. There was three main ideas. The first one is appointing elders. Number two, his second task was to teach the people, and we can read that in chapter two. We talked about it a couple weeks ago. In chapter three, we have these reminders of God's grace. So we look at these this morning, we think about what are the things that are important to God that we should be doing? If, if we were just starting a new church, how would we learn about this and, 
and Titus would come and talk to us. So we have appointments, teaching, and reminders for us today as we think about Titus chapter 3. So on this day of graduation, I also thought, what wisdom does the scripture have for us? And you know what? There's some good things right here. B.W., how many years ago did you graduate? Eleven now. Eleven years ago? I remember when you were just a scrawny little seventh grader. <laughs> and now you're holding a baby. Still scrawny. <laughs> B.W., you're amazing. Reminders, reminders, what's wisdom? So today we're going to talk a few reminders. So how do you keep remembering? How many use sticky notes to remind yourself of stuff? Do you still use sticky notes? Or do you just like to play with them? Hmm. How many do this anymore? Does anybody ever tie a string on your finger anymore? Anybody? Hmm. It still works if you do it, but you got to remember what you put the string on your finger for. It's a tricky game. Sticky notes, a sign on the fridge or on the mirror or where do you keep them? I like this one a lot. This is a floor mat they got for this person before they leave the door. Turn off your straightener. I thought about house fires and thinking of Elise. Do you know what this is? We'll just talk about it for just a brief moment because my mind took a, a little trip on a rabbit trail. Leading factors in home cooking fires. Elise, do you know this? First one is equipment unattended. When you leave something on in the kitchen and you walk away. That's the number one reason for a kitchen fire. Did you know that? Okay, elbow your neighbor and say, stop leaving the kitchen when you're cooking. <laughs> number two, abandoned or discarded materials. I'm not sure what that means, but it starts a fire. Number three, heat source too close to combustibles. So you put your dish towel down by the stove and the pan's on there and the heat goes over and starts your towel on fire. Don't put your combustibles by the fire. Unclassified misuse of materials. In other words, you're not using the right things for the right things. Unintentionally turned on or not turned on items like the toaster. Do you know the toaster and the iron are big causes of home fires? You leave them on when you leave the house? Don't do that. At least I'm doing this for you, right? <laughs> Failure to clean. Anybody ever had that problem? Grease, right? We don't wipe our grease off and clean it and start a grease. So that reminds me to say one thing in honor of Lorraine today. We talked about it Friday. Lorraine was a clean freak. Did anybody know that? She planned. This is for all of you youngsters out there. The way she cleaned her home was on Monday, she had a certain item she cleaned. On Tuesday, she went to the next room. On Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, every day of the week, she had something she cleaned. And the boys always laugh because they said if they came home from school and they set something down on a dresser or someplace on the table and it was unattended for even overnight, they said it was gone. It was in the garden. It was nowhere to be found. <laughs> Clean. Just in honor of her. Look at these verses this morning. Verses 1 and 2. Paul is giving this message to Titus who's taking it to the churches. He's taking it to people like us. He says, remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities. We are. Sometimes it's easier to grouch about the stuff going on than it is to pray about the stuff going on. We need to be prayers. We need to be praying and entrusting God with the things of our rulers and authorities. I'm not in that spot. I don't know their complications. I don't know the issues or difficulties, and I don't know if they wake up or go to sleep at night. I'm not in that spot. God didn't put me there. But I pray for those who are. Our local community as well. Don't forget about our local leaders and our officials and all those people who take care of us, they need, to be, they need to have our prayers, and we want to give that to them. Remind the people to be obedient. Obedient about what? Well, obedient to the word of God. Obedient to the letters that Paul's bringing. Obedient to the things of God. The people knew about those. Remind the people to be ready to do whatever is good. That one's so important. Notice the word prepared or ready in the statement. Not just to do good when you've planned for it, but when something comes along your way and it happens to show up in your face, are you ready to do something good? These are the kinds of things that us as Christians should think about. Next to slander no one. Watch what we say about each other. It's so important to keep good words to each other. To be peaceable and considerate of each other. 
Sometimes that's a complicated thing too. And to show true humility towards who? Tell everyone. Am I better than somebody else? I don't think so. Sometimes if it comes across wrong, there's apologies to be made, but how do we show and express our humility towards others? The topic of Titus chapter 3, verses 1 and 2 is this. See what it says? Christian citizenship. What kind of citizens are we in the community? Do we rise above or stand out a little bit as being people who others appreciate to have around? We're going to go through chapter 3 very quickly, but I want you to look at these. So 1 and 2 are the reminders. This is what Titus was giving to everybody who were Christians. Let's look at the next two verses, or next verses, 3 through 8. You got your Bible open? At one time, this I love, because Paul's reminding Titus to say, we were once like this. We once graduated, just like Elise, like Clacy and Carly and people that are graduating. We once were there, weren't we? And so we think about their spot. Well, that's what Paul's saying today. At one time, we too were in that same spot. We were foolish, we were disobedient, we were deceived, and we were enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. Now, I'm not saying that's what I'm referring to at least today, so I should be careful what I'm saying, right? I'm saying these are the ideas that we have been come from, we have matured out of, we have grown in Christ from these things. If you're still struggling with these things, then you have to ask yourself, am I still enslaved? Am I still caught up in passions and pleasures and things that are deceptive? Look at the next sentence. We lived in malice. Malice is a type of anger. It's a deep-seated anger. I'm never happy. I always have this kind of rage buried inside of me. Malice, and I lived in envy where I looked at everybody else's stuff as better than my own. Being hated and hating one another. What kind of a way is that to live? We come to church this morning. Do you want to be hated? Do you want to hate one another? No. We wouldn't even show up here if that was the case. We go to the grocery store, and I love going to the grocery store, but not when I'm in a hurry. <laughs> you know why? You have the same problem, don't you? Every aisle. If you're in a hurry, sometimes you look down the aisle to see who's there first, don't you? And say, Jesus, I love them, but i got to get going. Look at verse 4. Look at verse 4. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior appeared, when Jesus showed himself on this planet, remember Paul's talking to Titus, and Titus is taking this letter to these people in these churches on the island of Crete, okay? He says, remember, remember, but when the kindness of the love of God our Savior appeared, he did what? He saved us. Not because of righteous things we had done. You get that? Jesus did not show up because I was doing really good things. He did not show up and say, I'd like to save you because you're one of the best in the crowd. Did you ever think about that? Jesus didn't show up looking for the good people everywhere. He came to save all the people everywhere because we were in the same sinful condition. It says, the kindness and the love of God, our Savior, appeared. He saved us. Not because of the good things we've done, but because of what? His what? His mercy. You see, it doesn't really have to do with us except in our lost condition. It was because of His great love and mercy for us that He came to this earth. Look at the next sentence. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit has changed us. The Holy Spirit is in our lives. Verse 6, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior. We live through the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. The good things we do every day comes from the power and presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The truth that we live by comes from the power and presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And sometimes we're deceived in believing a lie. It's because the Spirit of God we haven't allowed him to be part of that part of our life. You read verses 7 and 8. This is so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs. We already have a place in heaven. 
We already own property in heaven, having the hope of eternal life. Verse 8, as a reminder, this is a trustworthy saying. You can say this every day, all week long, and it will always be good. You got that? This is trustworthy. And I want you to stress these things, Paul says to Tim Titus, so that those who have trusted in God may be careful to devote themselves to what? Doing what is good. Be ready to do what is good. These things are excellent and profitable for everyone. Go to the next verses, 9 through 11. Look what he says. But avoid, stay away from foolish controversies. How many of you get into arguments over stuff that really doesn't even matter? I've been guilty of that. I start arguing with someone, pretty soon we're looking at each other like, why are we even arguing about this? Who cares? Or we can't do anything about this. We should be praying instead of arguing. Avoid controversies. Avoid genealogies. Genealogies that lead me to be a better person than you might be because my bloodline is a little more important than yours. How does that help? One thing I like about those genealogy places, the 23s and me's and all that, it gives you this breakdown. And it might tell you that I was listening, visiting with a family not so long ago, and I couldn't remember who it was when I was reading that this week, but it made me smile. Oh, I know who it was. Patty, Beth's sister, Patty, and her husband, Greg. They did this genetic thing. And Greg, do you remember him? He's a big guy. He's 6'5", you know? And he looked at him, and she started laughing one day when they sent it in. She says, oh, who knows? You're probably some kind of a Viking or something in your family. And they got the report back, and you know what it said on it? Did you know Viking is part of a genealogy? How many of you think your neighbor is part Viking? They got horns on their head. They sing real loud. Act like a bowl in a china shop. <laughs> they break stuff. Do you have anybody like that in your life? They're probably part Viking on their genealogy. Hey, we don't argue about that. But what I do like about it is it made us common to know all of where we're from. And it makes us kind of common people. You're not better than me because of your genealogy or your bloodlines. Go to else. Avoid foolish arguments and quarrels about what? The law. There's one person in here, if I had a question about the law, I would probably call him first. He's also the tallest person in church. <laughs> Your Honor, do people ever get into foolish arguments and quarrels about the law? You don't want to say anything out loud, do you? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Of course they do. That's why he wrote it, isn't it? And Paul was this great lawyer. He loved the law. And he says, stop arguing and quarreling about it. Why? Because these things are unprofitable. And they're what? They're useless. Now, we're going to put all this in perspective for a moment. Because the law is useful. But what is Paul talking about? Verse 10. Warn a divisive person once. And then warn him a second time. That he's being divisive. He's trying to divide and split and cause problems. And after that, have nothing to do with them. You may be sure that such a man is warped and sinful. He is already condemned by his own self. So do I need to add to that? No. Lastly, Paul gives these final remarks. Verses 12 down through 14. He tells that people to say hi to and people to talk to and come to where to meet them. But look at verse 14. Look at verse 14. Paul says to Titus this really cool thought about how he embraces all the people in the church. Look what he says. Our people must learn to devote themselves to doing what is what? Good. You think Paul is talking to any of us as well? What am I devoted to in this life? I know I have my jobs. I know I have these. But what are my devotions to? Why would we devote ourselves to doing what is good? In order that they may provide for daily necessities and not live unproductive lives. We are producers. Verse 15. Everyone of me sends you greetings. Greet those who love you in the faith. Grace be with you. 
A trustworthy saying. Doing good in all things. I want to skip down a little bit. The big idea is from Titus chapter 3. Do what is good. Remember how we used to be and that we've been saved from that. Don't go back there. And lastly, live productive lives. I'm going to give you this reminder this morning. Why did Paul write this? Why did he give it to Titus and then tell Titus to go take it to people? Paul wrote this to the Christians. Jerry Grip this week. Maybe you don't know. I just got a phone call last evening from Celeste. And Celeste went over and knocked on the door and there was no answer. She tried calling first. She went over and knocked on the door and took her key out and went in and asked for Jerry and found Jerry sitting in her chair. She had gone home to heaven. Just that quick. Jerry was just here last Sunday with her sister Phyllis for Mother's Day together. Jerry's husband Dale is the one who made this cross over here in the corner out of uh, parts from the organ for us. And just this week, Jerry sat down in her chair and Jesus whispered, come home. She was gone that quick. I think Paul gives this reminders to us for these kind of things. Take a few moments in your heart, if you would, this morning and just think for a moment. The time we have should be used for God to help people find heaven. And when Paul talked to Titus about remind the people to do what is good. He wasn't saying them to just go do nice things for everybody. He was saying do what is good because it helps people come closer to the kingdom of heaven. When we do what is right, we move closer to the kingdom of heaven. We bring others with us. Do what is good so that others may find God. Not just be a nice person so you get a slap on the back. Do what is good so that people come to God. Titus carries his message on this boat. He's nervous probably the whole way to the island of Crete. Who's he going to see and how is he going to be greeted and how will they embrace him or will they beat him up? And he goes to the churches and he starts talking about these things of God from Paul. And the people embrace this truth. And Titus did it. He carried that message. And people in heaven we're going to see were in the church with Titus. When he brought this message to him. This reminder last week. And I don't want you to forget it for a little bit. I don't want you to forget it. About the sparrows. They're sold for two pennies. Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed the very hairs on your head are numbered. God has not forgotten where you are. And the book of Titus reminds us of that. You are one of his. Jesus came to save each one of us. As we come to him. So that's why we give our hearts to Jesus. I want to pray. Will you bow your heads with me and pray? Father, your son Jesus did a great miracle for us when he came to this earth and he brought salvation to us. And it's for us just to open our hearts today and embrace the Lord Jesus as our Savior and say, Jesus, come into my life. Forgive my sin and, and, and take away all those things that I've done and help me to become a new person in you, Jesus. And let your Holy Spirit change my life and help me to be devoted to doing what is good so that people may find God. Lord, let us be those kind of people in our communities, Christian citizens who are embraced and loved and who help people. Father, forgive us the times when we fail or we mess up and, and bring us back to that place where we can keep going. Don't let us lie there and wallow and be sad and crying. God, let us come back to you and embrace these truths again. Don't let us fall to Satan's traps in our lives, but let us know you and change us. Help change us, we pray. Thank you, God, for your blessings today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for saving us. Thank you in your name. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you, and may he be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. We're going to turn in our hymn to number 154. We're going to stand and sing this morning, please. Number 154. God be with you till we meet again. Elise, if you want to go to the back door with me, we'll stand and get hugs and kisses. Go to the back door.
Let's sing together the first and last verse. God. Let's see. God be with you.